Hello everyone, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Everyone loves a good ritual bath, but what happens when you don't have a bathtub? I've answered this question before whenever I get messages about it, but I wanted to make a full-on video about different alternatives for ritual baths when you don't actually have a bathtub. So what is a ritual bath? It's exactly as it sounds, a magical bath created for a specific purpose. The process is ritualized by creating the space, mindfully choosing the ingredients, the spell timing, and other correspondences. For me, the entire process of creating a ritual bath is magical and sometimes religious. It's a time when all other distractions are blocked out, a time set aside specifically for me to focus on my magical intention and what I want to either bring into my life or get rid of. And I've always been drawn to water, especially as a child. You would find me begging to go swimming at a family member's house that had swimming pools, wanting to go to the beach, or even mixing my own magical potions in the bathtub. I mean, who, who didn't do that? Anyway, some people feel like they get left out of bath rituals because they don't have a bathtub. Or if they're like me, they don't fit in most bathtubs. I'm a tall person. Or maybe you have a disability that makes getting into a bathtub difficult for you. Or you just have an aversion to being submerged in water. Whatever the issue is, there are ways to get around needing a bathtub for a water ritual or a bath ritual. For me, one of the purposes of a ritual bath involve being actively touched by the water and the ingredients. If you have a large enough sink, you can fill the sink with water instead. Don't have a big enough sink? Then you just need a big bowl. You would follow the same process by first creating your sacred space in whatever way you choose. I do this by cleansing the space and myself then lighting some incense and candles before meditating on my specific purpose and intention. I do all of this before I even begin to fill the sink or bowl or bathtub with water. With the sink full of water, you can then set your intention, add your ingredients, and then charge the water with your energetic purpose. Then you get started. Dip your hands into the water, use a rag, whatever method you need to do to get that water to touch your skin. You can do this part with intention and purpose too, going either from the top to bottom to get rid of something or from bottom to top to bring something into your life. Now doing a ritual in a shower can be a little different, but it can still be done. You just have to adapt to your circumstances. Create the space as normal, including candles and incense if you have them or are going to use them. Then instead of having the herbs or ingredients just in the bottom of the shower, hang them directly from your shower head or put them in a pouch and hang them that way. Let the steam from the water release the aromatics of whatever herbs that you used. Obviously, please make sure that the herbs you're using are safe to come in contact with hot water and your skin. You can also draw a sigil on the shower head before you start your shower. Then as the water comes through the shower head and the sigil, the sigil is activated and the water is charged. For me personally, I find that shower rituals are good for cleansing and banishing just because the water will naturally flow from the top of my body to the bottom and then down the drain. Now, maybe you live in communal housing, dorm rooms, or you just don't wanna fill the sink or bowl with water or take a shower. That's okay. There are alternatives for you too. While I think this particular alternative might not work as well as a full-on bath ritual or one of the other alternatives where you use the water in the sink or the bowl or even the shower, I do think they can be useful depending on what you're doing. Again, that's just my practice and that's just how I work with it. If it doesn't work for you that way, that's okay. Instead of being submerged or actively touched by the water, you could create a body spray or a body mist that you can go from top to bottom or bottom to top, and the ingredients that you use would correspond with your specific intention and spell. I actually have one that I created for self-love that I will link up in the top and in the description below. This last one isn't going to apply to everyone, but I wanted to mention it here because it's important for me. Most of my ritual baths involve cleansing in one form or another. 
And there is no better feeling for me than a good deep ritual cleansing by taking a swim in the ocean or just a quick dip in and out depending on the ocean. Living water, which is not an official term or anything, is a body of water that's found in nature. They hold inherent power for me and it doesn't matter if it's man-made or not. It's still out in nature and there are still spirits and energy there. What can change your experience though is the type of water you're in. The ocean, for example, is going to be vastly different than a lake. A river is going to have different properties than a stream. The location can also play a large role in the properties of that body of water, as well as the salinity of the water. So is it fresh water? Is it salt water? Is it a combination of both? Even what kind of wildlife lives in the area? Obviously, if you're planning on ritualizing your dip in natural water, don't add ingredients to it. That's the equivalent of littering and we don't need that. Please know that the tips here are not the be all end all of alternatives for ritual baths. These are just my tips and things that I have found useful over the course of practicing magic and witchcraft in a variety of housing situations. Before we go, I want to leave you with a few more little pieces of information that I think are really important when practicing these alternatives or just any form of water magic in your house. Please be sure that you're adding body safe ingredients to whatever bath ritual or bath ritual alternative that you're doing. Essential oils do not mix in water. They are hydrophobic. They don't dissolve in water. So be sure that what you're using is safe for your skin. You also want to make sure that it is safe for other sensitive areas of your body, especially if you are submerging yourself fully in water or letting water touch all areas of your body. Some of your skin is more sensitive than others. Also, don't do bath rituals or any of these alternatives too often, unless you're using the, the spray. That's different. Um, but these types of rituals can use a lot of water. According to the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, the average shower head uses two and a half gallons of water per minute, which for a 10 minute shower is more than 20 gallons, which I think is over 70 liters for those that are not on the US system. The average bathtub holds roughly 30 to 40 gallons. So if you do a ritual bath once a week, you're using a lot of water and for the sake of being eco-friendly and sustainable and conserving our natural resources, I can't recommend that you do a ritual bath or an alternative that uses a lot of water more than maybe once a month. Lastly, if you're like me and you're on a septic system, which if you don't know what a septic system is, you're probably on sewer, so that's a little different, but there are things that are not septic safe so I can't put certain things down my drain. So make sure that whatever you're using is safe for whatever system that you're in. Obviously, these are all things that are mundane in nature. If you're using candles and incense, please practice fire safety, all of the regular things that we do as witches when we're using our ingredients and candles and fire. I hope you enjoyed this short little video on different alternatives for ritual baths. These are things that I have used in the past myself. Um, I have lived in apartments, I have lived in condos and houses and places that didn't have a bathtub. So over the course of time, you just have to kind of get creative. I hope these alternatives have inspired you to maybe come up with your own. If you try any of them, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other alternatives that you would like to share, go ahead and leave those in the comments below too. And I will see you in my next video.